Despite some encouraging trends in the overall use of heroin, opiate addiction remains a large problem across the tri-state. As part of our ongoing coverage of the heroin epidemic, the Nine on Your Side I-Team is giving you an exclusive look inside a treatment program. And I-Team reporter Hillary Lake is actually following two Northern Kentucky women through recovery. What's the latest? Well, guys, we first introduced you to these women in December. Aside from heroin addiction, they have something else in common. They're going through treatment for a second time, and that's not uncommon for some addicts. Okay. I'm an addict. I think I'm never going to die from a heroin overdose. Rachel Thomas has a harsh reality to contemplate in simple surroundings. She's two weeks into her second time through treatment for heroin addiction. I kindly finally accepted that I was here and um, that I was going to do this, you know, no matter how hard it was. When she's not in group classes with other women at the Brighton Recovery Center in Florence, she spends time alone writing and thinking about why she used heroin. I've broken down and cried and cried and had just been kind of a wreck. There's a saying in treatment here, you have to get uncomfortable with yourself to get comfortable. Women in the earliest stage of the program, like Rachel, can only wear scrubs. Everything most of us take for granted is gone. Rachel can't even shave or wear makeup. This is my room. All of our clothes. This is my bed. Jessica Hardy lives in a different part of the house. It's awful, but it's very humbling. So, And we are only allowed to have 62 items of clothes, including socks, belts, purses. She's three months in and has earned back some privileges. I have not had peace of mind in a long time, and just to get my own room, coming from having 15 other roommates and living on a bunk bed and to this, it's a lot more peacefuler. But the rewards aren't free. I'm, I'm very scared. So scared. What scares you the most? Learning about myself. Jessica's in the second phase of treatment. She's starting to understand herself and face the disease of addiction. I have entitlement issues. I fix manage and control, power thrust, um, some guilt for my daughter. Jessica and Rachel are also feeling another emotion, grief. Friday I found out my great grandma had passed away. Jessica longs for her baby daughter who she rarely sees. Photos keep them connected. It makes me upset. That's why I keep it in my bag, because it's really hard. Rachel had to stay in treatment instead of going to her great grandmother's funeral. So she used her words to say goodbye in a letter. I just hope you watch over me and know that I'm trying to change my life around. More than 100 women live at Brighton Recovery Center. They're either homeless or court ordered into treatment. Anita Prater directs the program, which is based in behavioral modification. She says grief makes healing harder. When they first get into recovery and their body is starting to heal and flush out of, of all the chemicals in their system, they, they begin to feel emotions and they don't know how to handle that because they've not been feeling emotions. Prater says some women don't make it through the first time because they decide treatment is too tough. A judge ordered both Rachel and Jessica into treatment. I know I have another use in me, but I don't know if I have another um, sobriety left in me. And Rachel and Jessica know it's up to them to get clean. Honestly, if I do everything I need to do, I feel like I'll surpass where I was last time. The program director tells me usually when women don't complete the program the first time around, it's because they either choose to leave or they get kicked out because they broke a rule. She says every woman is allowed to get put on a waiting list and come back after 30 days. Back to you, Craig.